amazing show for you today. Big day on the grid. But first, I have to introduce my co-host, Rockin' the House Geek. It's <laughs> Matt Gluskowski. <laughs> yeah, you did. That's funny. So uh, that came from somebody Somebody wrote in last week and said said they missed that uh, introduction. They said they missed the Rockin' the House Geek. I said, I'll bring it back next week. So I, there's probably people that are watching, like, why did he just say that? What's Is it matter? dark on that side of the set? I don't know. It seems dark over there. I got, I, all I know is I got like a thing uh, growing out of my head. Yeah, I got a this thing This is a microphone. Here, it's what? Like, I right. can't hear. What? 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 Anyway. Hey, by yeah, the that Rock and Housekey thing's old. Hey, uh, good job on, on getting that shiny thing off my head. It looks good. <laughs> good <laughs> Lord. It looks like you put a spotlight Ooh, of shiny on my head. All right. You know what it is? Guys don't know how to do makeup on guys. <laughs> Arnaldo, seriously. Look at this. It's like a beacon. All right. Hey, you know what shiny thing I don't... I, so I woke up this morning. Yeah. Oh, wait. I was in the wait, shower. Wait. I woke up this morning. Uh, nah, nah, nah. I was in the shower. Uh, nah, nah, nah. I saw that I didn't have a watch on. Dun, 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 dun. It was grid day. And I was going to wear my white watch. And oh, I forgot. Man, you, oh, forgot your white watch. See, That's, I, that stinks. Because Matt has this really... Awkward white watch. Hey, Awkward. we got a great show. Despite that Matt forgot his thing, we have a great show. Number one, uh, we have Russell Preston Brown here. Russell is like an expert at the quadcopters, the DJI Innovations quadcopters, on shooting video and stuff from quadcopters. And he stills. He teaches a class, and stills. Yeah. He does a class on it at Photoshop World, like a pre-conference workshop where they go out and shoot stuff. He's going to be here today, and if you've got questions about quadcopters, about military drones... <laughs> Back it up. Quadcopters. Anyway, Russell will be here, and he's terrific at it. We're, we're, we're excited. He's to have doing him. some classes here, so right. it's pretty cool. we got a couple of housekeeping things, and then we have a very special caller, and I know a lot of you tuned in today to hear this new secret stuff from Google. You know, there's some of their image editing stuff, so we're going to get to that in just a second. Uh, first, just a couple of quick things. Number one, yesterday Terry White did a great blog post about what about the fact that when you install the new Creative Cloud updates, it, it leaves the old Creative Cloud and then installs new ones. How to deal with that, why, and he gives a step-by-step -step thing. It's tremendously popular. That's number one. Go, go to Terry White's tech blog, or you can go to my blog. I, I linked to it yesterday. So go to my blog, scottkelby.com, scroll back one day, and you'll see a link to Terry's blog. Number two is, this isn't happening to everybody, but there are a few people that are having an issue that when they had Photoshop CC, then they installed the 2014 version of Photoshop CC, that when you go to Lightroom and say open a project, even after you've removed the old one, it, it doesn't open in Photoshop, right? Mm -hmm. You had that problem? I haven't, no. Okay, some people are having it, not everybody, but the solution we found, or we, I didn't find it, it's people that have, have had a problem with it, is just reinstall the new 14 CC and it goes, oh, there's CC, and it, it'll, you can go back from doing your workflow from Lightroom to Photoshop and back. I don't know if that made any sense, but if you're having that problem, you know, oh, that's the thing. All right. Um, tomorrow we got a new class coming up you're going to want to know about. Every Thursday we release a new class on Kelby One. Tomorrow's class is one a lot of people want to know about. It is on DSLR filmmaking. So it's with Mia McCormick, who is awesome. And if you're just getting into it, it's the basics of filmmaking. So it's DSLR not, video basics. Yeah, so yeah. if you're Vincent LaFerre and you're watching this, you can skip this class. But if you're just thinking, hey, I'd like to get into DSLR filmmaking, Mia is awesome, and her class goes live tomorrow. Every Thursday we have a new class, and tomorrow it's that. So Online uh, class. I got a uh, – so I just got to tell you because I, I got a preview of the class, and – um, Mia, Mia, she came, she came to me and she wanted to do the class and DSLR video basics. I'm like, go for it. And she's like, I want to do some of the footage. I wish she was going to be out in Vegas a while back. And she's like, just give me one camera guy. She went out there with, with Mark, one of our, our video guys here. Mark. Dude, I got to tell you, like this, this class is, it's, it's, it's one of the nicest classes that, that we've had that, that have come out in, in, in a long time. It looks Which just really, really we cool. We only need one cameraman, so let's fire all the rest. <laughs> no, okay. I, I just want to give hats off to him because they really went out there and they, uh, oh, they, no. they, 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 they put together a great class. So you got to check it out. Good job, Mia. Good job, Mark. And uh, so that goes to, to live tomorrow. Hey, one more thing. Frank Duerhoff. You've heard of Frank. You love Frank. You know Frank. We're giving away a Frank's copy of Frank's back. book. Soon we'll show you a copy of Frank's book, but right now we're not going to show you Frank's book. But we are—we have several others. We have several others, but we are giving away five copies of Frank's book over on our Facebook page for Kelby One. So it's facebook.com slash Kelby One online. We're giving you a giveaway. The giveaway is, is we're picking the winners on Friday. So just go there and leave a comment at facebook.com slash 
KELB1 online. If you just go to KELB1, it's some dude. Go to KELB1 online, it's us. You'll know it's us when you see it. And uh, just leave us a comment on the little post about Frank's book and we're gonna pick five winners. Or you can win one copy. Oh, there it is. Arnaldo, the shine maker, is holding it. He will, he will now, can you come on? It's okay to come on camera. Look there, ah, here's Frank's book. There you go. This kind of makes up for my shiny head. There it is. Mastering and Model Shoot, Fan up. phenomenal, phenomenal book. Already a bestseller, so very well done to Frank. But we're gonna have a giveaway of that. We're also giving away Peter Krogh's damn book. Peter Krogh's damn book. DAM stands for Digital Asset Management. The name of this is the DAM Book Guide to Organizing Your Photos with Lightroom 5. It's a DVD. And a book. And a book in one. We're giving away this. Peter Crow kind of wrote the book on digital asset management and why this is a subset of that. Peter Crow, a beautiful man. We love Peter. Presentation Zen Design. Hey, that's from Gar I, Reynolds. Yes, it is. That, that Presentation Zen, I think, was the best book ever written, written on how to design slideshows and presentations. I like, I read that book and I, I kid you not, I was flying to San Francisco to make a presentation and on the plane, this is a few years ago, I redid the whole slideshow on the flight based on reading his book. Cool. He's brilliant, that's part two. Yes. And then uh, from one of our newest Photoshop World instructors, Roberto Valenzuela, Roberto Valenzuela. Picture Perfect Practice. Picture so, uh, Perfect Practice. Looking forward to seeing him at Photoshop We have World. all of these giveaways and more. Well, not more. Oh, let's give away two tickets. Two, right here. Joe McNally is in Seattle this Friday, two days from now. Two. Unless you're watching this on Thursday, then it's one day from now. Unless you're watching it Friday, it's that day. Uh, and he's doing his, his, his uh, Power of One Light tour. So if you're in Seattle, around Seattle, want to go, at the end of the show, you'll have a chance to win. Now, we are going to get to the, the meat of why you watch today. Is First, well, there's two meets. We're going to get to meet one. Uh, we have John Knack on the line. Now, if you go, John Knack, that name sounds familiar. Oh, he's that guy with Adobe. He was with Adobe. Now he's John Knack with Google. <laughs> it will take me six to eight weeks to get used to saying John Knack at Google because I actually thought for a long time that John Knack was his first name and at Adobe, Adobe was his, was last, his name. last name. Yeah. But anyway, John is on and John is working on all kinds of cool imaging stuff, as you would expect from John Knack. He's a super genius editing guy. Uh, so we have John live on the line, but not on the telephone line. We actually have a video feed and John is going to show us some really super cool new stuff coming from Google. So, John, are you there on the line? Cool. Hey, guys. Can you see me? And hear uh, me? We can see you. Hey. And look, I can hear him. Hey, you didn't have to go to some fancy studio for us, John. <laughs> well, <laughs> the funny, the irony is I was at work uh, at Google, and I was all set to present, and then I couldn't get um, my iPhone to screen share uh, with my Mac, and so I thought, well, I'm going to drive home quickly, see if that works better. I still can't get it to work, so uh, as I was promising Matt before the show, I'll, I'll do some interpretive dance. Uh, for part of the presentation. <laughs> which you're surprisingly um, good which amazing. at, John. <laughs> well, A lot of people don't realize about you, John, but you're interpretive dance. Don't take anything away from it. Thank you. If the software thing falls through, you know, I've got something to fall back on. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm actually, oddly enough, in my kitchen because um, what I was hoping to show you was, uh, and I will definitely show you part of this, and part um, you'll, you'll be able to try for yourself uh, later if you want. Um, but what's, uh, what's kind of cool is... Uh, uh, so a lot of people probably know uh, Snapseed on iPhone, iPad, sure. now on Android. Um, you know, tens of millions of photographers have downloaded it. Um, it was, you know, uh, uh, iPad app of the year named by Apple. And so um, uh, Google acquired uh, Nick software, who you guys probably obviously know uh, from, you know, Silver Effects Pro and Color Effects and Aveza and all these pro tools. So um, the Nick guys are part of the Google family. And... Um, We've been working with them to say, all right, well, let's take this Snapseed engine uh, and let people use it um, all over uh, the place. So not just uh, on an individual phone. And by the way, I have uh, Tom Hogarty telling me I should try Reflector. So yes, thank you, Tom. <laughs> Reflector doesn't like me for some reason. So. Um, but, but what a paisan that, uh, that he, he, he's trying to help. Um, yeah, I don't know what's strange about it. So anyway, um, we've, got, uh, we've got this great Snapseed engine. And so uh, the team, it's been a little quiet. People are like, well, what happened to Snapseed? And, and uh, what they haven't been seeing behind the scenes is um, the team's actually gone and essentially rewritten the whole thing. Uh, so it's now non-destructive. It's cloud synced. Um, and it works uh, across uh, iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, web. Um, and that's a little what I wanted to show you guys today. Sounds good. We're, we're, we're excited. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, All man. Right. 
Cool. So, um, so the interpretive dance part that I would have shown you um, <laughs> is just uh, I wanted to edit a, um, uh, a photo on my phone uh, and then show you the results on the web. But we'll skip that part, and I'll just show you what the web interface looks like. Um, okay, so, one, so it is browser-based? Yeah, yeah. In fact, what's funny is a lot of people keep tweeting me, and they say, like, hey, you guys used to make Snapseed um, for desktop. Uh, then you got rid of it. I wish you'd bring it back. And it's like, well, have you ever gone to photos.google.com? Because if you do, there's Snapseed for desktop. It's just built into the web now. Um, now, the only slight catch on that is um, you do have to use the Chrome browser because it uses something called Native Client, um, which at the moment is only supported in Chrome. But um, the cool thing about Native Client is it lets you run imaging code or all code uh, really, really quickly, just like you would um, in a native desktop app. So um, if, if you were to take a screenshot and you didn't know that this was running in a web browser, it would look and feel exactly like a fully native uh, Mac or Windows app. Uh, so if you want, I can take you guys on a little tour. Yeah, please, please do. Cool. All right, so let me share my screen. Um, so are you guys seeing a grumpy kid in a barber chair? We are indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I'm, I'm gratuitously throwing in a family member uh, <laughs> because, uh, it, it, you know, what, who doesn't like a, a cute little kid? Uh, so anybody who follows me on social media is uh, probably seen that my son is uh, sort of famously grumpy. Uh, one time he forgot his hat and he said, I'll just wear my frown as a hat. Uh, so <laughs> he, you know, I, I take him to the barber shop. He's always uh, frowning. In fact, you know, if you're going to be friends with a bunch of Photoshop nerds, uh, they will uh, potentially turn your kid into a meme. Uh, so he's, he's, uh, he's Billy Idol, he's Les Mis, uh, <laughs> Bad Ugly, he's Luca Brazzi. So anyway, um, Brazzi. <laughs> so I, I brought this up because, um, oddly enough, I, I got, uh, Henry, this little dude to, uh, actually smile at the barber the other day. Uh, so I wanted to show you the process of how I might, um, tune up this image. And then, uh, the new thing here is, is that not only, you know, this has been non-destructive all along. But you didn't really have a way to um, capitalize on that. You didn't have the ability to go back and change your mind. Yeah, the undo. Say again. Yeah, the the undo basically. Right, right. I mean, you like while you were editing, you could undo. Yeah. But you couldn't, you know, come back later and like say, well, I like that, but I want to take out this step, or I want to tweak that one, or I want to use this setting uh, across multiple images, and now you can. Um, so I just went. So this is all built into Google Plus. Um, and if I uh, take this image and just use Edit. Um, again, if you're familiar with Snapseed, you should go, oh yeah, there's Snapseed. Like that's, you know, exactly the tools, um, I use on my phone or my tablet. Um, so let me just show you, um, and again, this, the, this first part of it is nothing new. So, uh, but, it, but in case you're not familiar with it, um, so I can go in and, you know, I always like to, uh, kind of punch up my image, um, apply some drama. Uh, I can go in and, you know, maybe I would do some, uh, some basic adjustments, like open up the shadows. I'm not going to do anything too crazy, just just to give you a sense of uh, the kind of things you can do. Uh, you know, I want to draw a little bit of attention by uh, maybe throwing a little vignette on there. Um, and, you know, maybe I want to put on a frame. Uh, so something really simple. Uh, okay, great. So uh, there we go. And we've got this, um, this image looking a lot better. And so if I compare it, you know, there was before and there's after. You know, it's yeah. just a couple clicks. Uh, now, again, this is all in my browser. If, if you didn't see, you know, the address bar, uh, you know, it should look and feel totally like native uh, imaging code. Um, so what's new is this little edits um, button down here. And what's cool is you can see all of the edits that I did to this image. Um, so I can go back and, uh, you know, go all the way back to the original. Uh, or I can go to any of these steps. And then if I want, I can actually go and uh, change my mind. So I might say, uh, you know, what, let me go back to the drama. And, you know, I, I just for... Uh, you know, demonstration I could show, I could back it way off, I could crank it way up, uh, I could hit apply, um, you know, I could add this uh, frame back in there. Uh, and I also can go in and uh, remove individual steps. Um, so really, really straightforward. It's, uh, you know, if you've used, uh, you know, tools like Lightroom, this kind of thing is, of course, going to be super familiar. Um, but this is really unlocking the power that's been there behind the scenes. Um, and so what I wanted to show you is, like, I could edit this picture with my iPhone, uh, using the Google Plus app, um, come here to Google Plus on the web, I could see all of those edits that I had done on my phone, and then I can go and change my mind. Um, and additionally, I can go and I can hit copy. And uh, again, just like, you know, uh, Lightroom, Aperture, Bridge, uh, many, many tools like that, 
um, I can move among my images, and then I can even uh, go and paste um, settings from image to image. Oh, that's um, cool. So again, yeah, so that's never been possible before. So I can, uh, uh, I can, you know, compare, and just to show, uh, if I don't have any edits applied, uh, I come into this one, and again, I just uh, go ahead and choose paste edits, and now I've got that same stack, and I could go like, oh, that's cool, but you know, maybe in this case, um, it's a little bit too bright. So I want to go back and you know back that off a little bit. I hit apply, uh, and I just click the frame, and now everything is reactivated. Um, so so pretty straightforward. No, um, that's good stuff though. Yeah. No, cool, thanks. Well done. Well, well done. High five. Hey John, can you? Uh, if, so if I see like a step in there, and I just want to get rid of it, is that what that little icon? Yeah, exactly. So if you went in and you're like, oh, you know what, that vignette maybe that's a little too old on Mills or something, you know, a little heavy handed. Um, which is why my, my wife always says. Um, you know, only I could if it just was go a white ahead. vignette. What's that? I said only if it was a white vignette. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, we would get some like laser neon uh, backdrops in there. That would be fun. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, exactly. I just can go in and um, I get rid of that, and I can hit uh, undo, and I can add that back in uh, if I really wanted to. Um, so the cool thing is, you know, as as you'd expect with a non-destructive system, um, you know, you're never losing any pixels. You're never um, getting stuck, you can always go back and change your mind. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, um, which I think is is kind of cool here, and this is something I, I haven't really seen other people do, um, is so Google has a lot of technology around um, computer vision and machine learning. And this is where um, I think we can maybe enable some some neat things. So, um, uh, so one thing Google does, and this is you know coming out of things like Google Images, is it'll actually look at images and you know know like oh that's you know that's a person and you know it, it can do facial recognition if you um, opt into that and say like oh yeah this is a picture of me or this is Henry or this is Finn, um, but it can also classify other things and you know like this is a landscape or this is an urban scene or whatever, and so what's cool is now we're experimenting with um, recognizing what the content of an image is, and then applying styling that we think would be a good fit for that image. Um, so this rolled out uh, together with um, the new enhancement to the editor. Um, but of course, they can be used independently. And so uh, I'll show you an example. I was um, walking around Germany last week. I did not bump into Tom Hogarty, although apparently he too was uh, walking around there. Um, Tom, Tom's always in Germany. Is he? Yeah. yeah. He, he's, a, he's a man of mystery, that guy. He is. Um, he's a moving target. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I was just uh, you know shooting some random pictures on the street. Uh, this is the original. Um, actually, uh, one thing that's kind of cool: Google um, goes and auto enhances photos um, automatically. Um, so usually it does a pretty light touch, but actually, if you see, I press and hold before and after. Um, it's already doing a first pass of just like basic color correction uh, for you. Uh, and again, that's based on uh, understanding some of what's in the image. Um, but in this case, um, it actually made a copy, and it took that and applied. Um, <laughs> uh, an interesting treatment to it. Um, so you can see, actually, there's a few different images here where, uh, for example, you know, I was shooting um, pictures out the window of a plane, and it would then go in and say, hey, what would it look like if um, I made sort of a virtual copy for you and applied uh, a look to that? Um, so this was all done totally without um, uh, my involvement. It's just mixing in um, some creative uh, uh, versions for me. Now, the idea here is is by no means to um, you know take your point of view or your taste out of it. In fact, um, it's quite the, res the reverse. It's to give people some uh, running start that they might not otherwise have. Like, well, that's a cool look. How would I ever get there? So this auto applied it. But the neat thing is, if I go in and choose edit, uh, as you would expect, and I then uh, can go into my uh, edits area, and you can see, oh, this is the recipe. Oh, you can copy it. Yeah, exactly. So if I were to um, go right back to the original, this would then be identical to the one that I just showed you. Right. Um, but these were the four steps that applied, and I could go in and say, like, oh, that's cool. So like, um, like you know, Brian Matisse was showing me yesterday or uh, uh, this this week, um, like, oh, here's how I get this particular effect. You know, this is sort of my my special recipe. Um, what's neat with a system like this is we can enable people uh, to connect to each other and share. Um, their expertise and, and maybe move that kind of edit around. And in this case, uh, these are the ones that um, you know the Google Vision system applied for you. But really, that's just a running start. So you could take this. You know, I could go ahead and uh, copy this, and uh, I don't even know what image is next. But let's just see um, what happens. Okay, here's a, a plain wing. If I choose paste edits and give it a second, 
uh, it then goes and applies that same treatment. Um, and as uh, Matt was asking, uh, yeah, by all means, you can go and you can remove stuff, you can go back and you can go and say, well, that's cool, but you know, I want to maybe you know, add black and white or add some vintage look. Um, so really, you've got the total flexibility. Uh, the thing that I think is exciting, it, it's less for me about this particular look, although I think that can be cool in a lot of cases. Um, it's more this general idea of can we figure out what the content of an image is and then um, start knowing your tastes and start putting those things together. Uh -huh. So this is really just a, a first step, but we think it's kind of exciting. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, that, 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 thank you very much for taking the time to do that. And and also, it's funny you mentioned Brian Matias because Matt and I, we had talked earlier today, we were both going to wear our, our I Love Brian Matias shirts today. We didn't. <laughs> okay. We forgot them. It's, it, now it's kind of awkward. But anyway, uh, John, thank you so much for taking the time to show us this. This is cool. Hey, uh, John, one last thing before you go. Uh, RC sure. asked, is this available on the iPhone in Google Plus? It is. Great question. So, yes, if Should you download right. the Google Plus app uh, in, uh, for iOS or for Android uh, and you go into your photos, all of that stuff can be backed up for free uh, in the cloud. Um, and, yes, then you can edit them directly and all that stuff is non-destructive right there. But, but John, what, what really is the cloud? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, that, that, that movie that's coming out. Nobody knows what the cloud is. is. That movie is going to scare everyone. No one's going to put another picture up on, on, on the cloud after what, next, thir next Friday when that movie comes out? What's the movie called? Sex Tape. Sex Tape. After okay. it comes out. Have you seen the, the previews for that, John? I, no, I saw the poster, but, yeah, but my I, rule I'm of sure it's is, forbidden to be shown at Google headquarters. <laughs> well, I, I just think everything gets better if you, you change uh, cloud to clown. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm, I think you should just trust the clown. I think you should put it in the clown. <laughs> my but, stuff is in the clown. <laughs> hey, thank you, John. We appreciate you taking the time to show us. That was very, very, very cool stuff. Hats off to the team at, at Google for, uh, for having, having uh, very smart and cool ideas. Thank you, guys. And, uh, John, we'll thank see you, you next time something cool happens. And, uh, uh, we enjoy your kitchen very much. Okay, thanks, guys. Hey, See you later. Eat. Word to live by. Eat. Eat. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the volume's loud. Okay. I got to get this thing out of my we're ear. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, joining us on the set, we're going to have a quadcopter fiesta because we have a quadcopter expert and just a generally cool guy, Mr. Russell Preston Brown. You may know him as Russell Preston Brown from Adobe. You may just know him as Russell Preston Brown, a guy who has three names. Anyway, we'll be with him and a whole lot more giveaways and fun and love and sex tape right after this. Don't go away. We all know the difference a great teacher makes. They inspire you, challenge you, and push you to do the things you never thought you could. For creatives, that means you've got to know your tools inside and out, whether it's Photoshop or photography, lighting or Lightroom, InDesign or After Effects. And while there are free videos out there, you have to watch 30 bad ones just to find a decent one. And a lot of times, the techniques are either outdated, complicated, or just plain wrong. What we need is a better way to learn. One that connects amazing teachers with creative people all over the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A thriving educational community with nothing but the most talented, engaging and respected teachers in the industry. Then we simplify the whole learning process with short, clear, concise classes. That's exactly what we've created for you right here at Kelby One. We are back. Look at that thing go. It's flying as if I'm by itself, it. but held it by somebody. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Luckily, you pulled that thing back, Russell. Hey, we are very fortunate to have with us today, Russell Brown. And you're Russell Brown for Adobe, but you're not doing Adobe stuff today, really. I am They're doing... still paying you, though, aren't they? Hey, this is wearing... a scam. He's wearing an Adobe okay. shirt. Let's just make it clear right now. Which camera am I looking into to get the real... The impact? blue window the screen. Lines. Okay. <laughs> Let's get real impact here. I am here. Wait, no, in that case, for impact, look over there. Oh, I am here representing Adobe Systems. I'm showing how to use Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and After Effects in combination with 
aerial photography. Now it's clear that I am working hard at Adobe <laughs> to play, <laughs> to me to work with these devices in yes, the air. Yes. And he's wearing an Adobe shirt. I in fact, am. the two of you got, you got the black logo I'm, shirts I'm going on today. I'm branded with the uh, Mpix today. <laughs> Mpix, right here. You just saw their ad. Yeah. I'm branded with nothing. So let's make it, okay, just a serious moment. No, <laughs> there would be never a serious moment. Yes, I am benefiting Adobe by sitting here with you today and, and helping people understand aerial photography. Now, do people get to ask me questions on this show? Yes, oh, they yeah. do. They will appear on that giant screen over there. Brad, I'm Brad afraid. Brad will be moderating let me, them. Let me just answer them before I see them. Go ahead. The first answer is 400 feet in the air. The second answer is 20 minutes. So how high can you fly? Go up, like, <laughs> how long will it stay up? And the third answer is, please go away. You're distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what are uh, so what classes are you here doing? Because you're here with uh, with Aaron Grimes. I am here with Aaron Grimes. Um, we are doing two courses: one on aerial photography, and the second one is on aerial videography. And did I take the moment to look into that camera again and tell everybody to sign up for my pre-conference at Photoshop World in Las Vegas? It's a very cool event. We're going to go out and we're going to make a movie. <laughs> I a love that impact. Movie. A dun, movie. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. So the um, members See, of that class R will. Ronaldo, Arnoldo, that, that's where you should have zoomed in. Like, like right there. Okay. Right? Like, like, but not kind of shake it. Say that line again. He's ready. <laughs> I'm ready. We're going to make. A movie. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. See, that's professional Hollywood right there. We're going, to go, we're going out to Nelson. We're going to create a movie live. We're going to edit it. What is Nelson? Nelson. The guy's house? Nelson, Nevada. Excuse me. It's Nelson, Nevada. Old, funky, eclectic town with things lying around. It's like a ghost town, right? A ghost town, but it's very photographable. Lots of yeah. things, you know, old things lying around. Uh, like me, young. <laughs> um, it's a cool town. You walk into it, you want to take photographs, but we're going to fly over it and make a movie called, okay, make the movie called Nelson, Nevada. God, he was really <laughs> slow on that. Nevada. We caught the A oh, in Nevada. <laughs> now, are you the least bit worried about somebody jumping off from maybe the first floor balcony onto the stage and shooting you? on the first floor balcony and shooting me? Where, where? He, he lost the reference. Though. I lost that was the Oh, I, got, the I just got it, reference. I just got it. Oh, oh, John Wilkes Booth. Booth. Okay, that was first in my place. Lincoln period. I know, he went through a Lincoln period where he was Lincoln and now he's uh, He was the best Andrew Lincoln Jackson. I've ever seen. I was uh, a good right. Lincoln. I do have a new costume for Photoshop. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. How did you get Bring into it. quad concrete? Yeah. Bring it back. So about a year ago, I saw this device and I said, um, and I think I saw the devices and I saw images coming out and they were boring and didn't look very good. I said, there's some potential here for getting in the air and taking some really great photography. So I picked it up early on, started taking photographs, and I must say, for dramatic emphasis again, I was one of the experts who led the way into video and aerial panoramas. The air. In the air. So I. I, when I first started this, I was taking... <laughs> Arnaldo, <laughs> what are we paying you for? It's already on sticks. It can just sit there. Arnold. What we're paying you for is the dramatic zoom. Seriously, you could literally walk away and it would continue to take. Arnaldo, uh, when I when put, he my, looks when I put says, my hand here... When he puts his hand there, that's your cue. <laughs> that's okay. See, it's on sticks. You, can, you could go to lunch and we would never know. Okay. But at that moment, this is where you make your living. What was I talking this about? This is what it's all about. Okay, there we go. Yeah, what was I talking that. about? I don't know. <laughs> no, we bring it back. Panorama. Bring it back. Panorama. 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 So <clears throat> I started going into the air to create panoramas. Yes. yes. And stitching the images together using Photoshop to stitch those images together. And it was really quite unique. And it caught on, did some tutorials on it. Uh, everybody's doing it. But the thing about aerial photography, when I first went up with aerial photography, all I had to do was get 20 feet off the ground and take a picture of a rock. And everybody went, it was cool. Cool. And 
<laughs> yes, yes, this is why you're here. So you get this picture of rock. Everybody thought that was the coolest thing. It's new perspectives, and that's the one thing this brings. It's a whole new perspective on the places we've all been to. You go to the Golden Gate Bridge, we've all seen the same shot from the same location. Go 40 feet up, take a different shot. Wow, I've never seen that shot before. Mm -hmm. And the unique thing is, you can fly over you, the um, Golden Gate Bridge or any subject that's a, a common location. You can fly over in an airplane. You can rent that plane or you can rent a helicopter. But that's at a particular height. There's some, a unique zone below 100 feet to the ground that no one gets into. Yeah. And the plane can't go there and you can with a quadcopter. And it's really quite unique and that's really a nice safe zone. And I just have to express, on our little, you ready? Guidelines for flying in the air. There, <laughs> this there, is going better than I thought. There are guidelines, and I'd like to uh, express those. It's just good common sense. And how many times I've, have I seen fools flying over traffic, or flying over people, or flying over wild animals? And it's those people who are ruining it for everyone else. It's, yeah, the national parks, right, yeah. this week just disallowed drone use on U.S. national parks. I actually All of agree them? with this. I put my hand there. Did you his see it? Didn't right there. I actually agree can't see his hand. with the FAA's regulations about national parks. Um, Why is that? Because they, <clears throat> it's the quiet zone. It's a place to be. There's wildlife. People are there for the quiet. It's so tempting to go there and shoot, but there are a lot of other public lands, locations where fewer people. I think there should be guidelines, regulations, and permits. If I want to go fly in that location, I should get a permit to do it. Will they let you get a permit? No, not right <laughs> now. <laughs> well, no, that certainly No permits are possible. But it, this stuff is in its infancy, so yes. you have to imagine I, that I, I must admit that something's that coming. The FAA has a big challenge, but uh, here I'm going to go off the record. Off the record and say that the answer to everything now seems to be no. If you want to fly there, no. Uh, uh, you never will be able to fly there, which I think is maybe their simplest answer to all of their questions is just say no to flying anywhere and it's safer than putting out any permit. Um, but I think things will change. I think Hollywood is going to change it. They need copters. They're using them all the time. You watch commercials or videos, and you see that low shot, and you go, well, that's not a helicopter, How? and that's not a crane. What are they shooting that with? They're shooting it with quadcopters or, or larger. It's, I would say, like, it's probably, and I hesitate to use the, the phrase game changer, but it's probably one of the biggest game changers this industry has seen in a, a long, major long time. game changer. I mean, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars what it used to cost. If it were $10,000 for every copter that went up in the sky, it would be in control. But it's now under $1,000 for every idiot, I mean every person, to get up there into the sky, and that's the danger of it. It's, I, we need some common sense rules for users going out with a device like this, and they're not there. We end up at a location with a regular camera, but we're not upsetting anybody. We end up at a location that's so tempting to get up in the air and see something from a new angle. Look at this, $479. $479. And that's for the first version, version one. And you have point to put one, a, you do have to put a GoPro camera on that, so add another $400. But this comes with a, a GoPro mount. It does come. It comes with the mount, mount, not the camera. Not the you camera. The camera. So now, there's something that a lot of people don't, don't understand, and, yes. and that is the, uh, the meaning of the term off the record. See, off the record isn't something you say publicly. If you say, this is off the record, that true. means it's private between me and perhaps the journalist that you're... <laughs> that's when true. you say off, off the, the record, record and then you say a whole big loud thing, that's all on, on the, the record. record. It's true. Right. <laughs> so just so you know, uh, everything that you said that was supposed to be off the record... I, I know. Well, and what I did on say uh, on the record was that... Did I say people were foolish? Did I say you the did. F you used foolish. No, I said the FAA was, I didn't say they were foolish. I said the FAA was merely saying no to everything as an answer to all problems. Well, that's like France, the international capital of no. Yeah. Go to France and ask anything. Can I have lunch here? No. Do, do you think I've got myself into trouble yet? 
No, I think it's early in the show, though. <laughs> hey, uh, Jock we Goodman has a question here, and he's asking it of you, Russell. He's saying, Russell, can I shoot a vertical pano of a waterfall? I tried with DSLR, but since the water pattern is different, it wouldn't line up. Well, it just so happens. This is, this is Jock. Jock, I just recorded a tutorial here for Kelby One that's all about that. And to go shoot a vertical panorama of a waterfall, you simply rotate the angle of the camera with your handy device in the back of this unit. I can then rotate this down and it rotates the camera and I rotate it incrementally and take a photograph each time I move this. So it rotates it from looking straight forward to tilting straight down and you can merge those together in Photoshop as a panorama. You should watch my tutorial but here's the tip and technique. Is it time for the tip and technique? Mm -hmm. I think it's time for the tip and tip technique. technique. Photoshop thinks that all panoramas are horizontal. So you need to rotate all of your series of images. Okay, everybody? Rotate them from horizontal to vertical. Line them all up. Open them into Photoshop as a series of layers. And then you can merge them together as a panorama. So, um, merge and blend them together as a horizontal, then rotate Flip them it. back to a vertical. Now, Was that a lot, did you understand that? I did, yeah. but, but let me ask you this. Yes. Now, I, I've taken vertical panos, yes. where I've shot like the Washington Monument or the Eiffel you Tower. Start, and then you move down. Right? Yes. Yeah. And did you have trouble merging those together? No, they came together perfect first time. Were you using Adobe Photoshop to merge those together? I was using Adobe Photoshop hmm. Photo Merge. That's the only thing I use. I've never Photo used anything merge. else. I found some difficulty merging um, vertical panoramas together. Unless I rotate them on the side, I could be completely really? wrong. I've never thought, I never even thought about that because I've never had a problem. The technology in Photoshop is designed for horizontals. And when it sees this vertical, I've seen it sort of like, what? What do but, I do? With but, these? But, but you can take a, a, a panorama in Photoshop that would go one, one leg, yeah. and then you could do another leg, and you could do a third leg if yeah. you want. Yeah. But for some reason, since this is working with the vertical only and there's no horizontal component, I've had trouble. Well, apparently Jock has too, so maybe I got lucky. So well, I, so I was wondering, because I thought Jock's question was the pattern of the water. Each photo you take, the water patterns are different. It wouldn't be if you did a long oh, exposure. You, yeah, but how long of an exposure can he, you do? The, ver the pattern of the water is correct. Sorry, I didn't read into that. So it's detail. like you'd have one, and then you'd stitch it, and then you'd have these weird when, interruptions in the pattern. When you merge those all together and blend them, Jock, I think it's going to blend the movement of the water together as well, and I think you it will dissolve and m morph those water elements together, I think it'll look okay. Yeah. So, so Jock added uh, an extra thing to this, so you don't change altitude to do it. No, that's absolutely wrong. You would think that you would start at the bottom and move up this way. It, um, it has to have a pivot point. Oh, get this on camera, Russ. It has to have a pivot point in order to work correctly. Straight up or straight down is not um, interpreted by the technology in Photoshop. Oh. Photoshop needs a focal point in which to determine the angle of change. And so I've tried the, in the middle of the waterfall. The, mm -hmm. If Jacques wants to do that, he has to do it manually. Let's imagine doing the waterfall or the, the redwood tree that you want to document and fly to the top and the bottom. The only way to do that is to photograph or bring in the camera again. You can photograph going straight up the waterfall or straight up the tree. Get your individual shots. You must manually layer the shots. Can you imagine? Manually layering the shots and manually separating the shots between each other and then blending them together. Yeah, it's yeah. the old way. You remember the old way of doing panoramas? We, those there was how many demos did we have on a 20 minute demo yeah. on that? So um, if you do the fly up and fly down, it has to be manually done. Yeah. If you rotate the camera from a single pivot point, then Photoshop will blend them together. The technology knows how to do that. Hey, one thing this about, about Jock. Is, is uh, that the only question? Oh, no, no, there's another one. So Jock, uh, Jock is from Hawaii and, and therefore is not allowed to complain about anything ever about anything. He lives in paradise. So Jock. Where does he live? 
He lives in Hawaii. I think he lives in the Big Island. Oh, I was just on uh, Maui and did some great photos. You can see my photographs on. Dun dun dun. Dun dun. <laughs> Russell Preston Brown. Search for me on Facebook and see all of my aerial photography from Maui. Okay. Uh, Glenn has an interesting question. Yeah. Glenn does. <laughs> uh, Glenn, I've seen this video of this um, woman harassing this poor uh, person at the beach. Um, she was absolutely in the wrong in this situation. Uh, that's my professional opinion. Um, I have not run across that situation, but one of my guidelines is to never, ever fly around people. It's anyone who can ask you a question or anyone you might be bothering. It's just um, one of my guidelines is I do not want to be bothering anybody. I don't want any questions. I don't want them to be upset with me. So I avoid those situations completely. Yeah, I was on a nude beach once, and this quadcopter comes flying over and hovered over me for 19 minutes and left. <laughs> and I, I got to tell you, I felt... footage on there, I bet. I, well, I'm Did sure. you feel uncomfortable? I felt a little uncomfortable. I, I, do you realize, beat up the, do you realize the resolution on that copter? You realize you would only be one pixel? No, you know what I did? <laughs> Some interpretive dance. <laughs> you and John. Do there. you like nude beaches? Oh, that's all I. If I'm at a beach, it's always a nude beach. Okay. No, I don't like nude beaches. <laughs> yes, I, I, that brings up like, an interesting really? story. Do you want to hear stories? I love I'm, stories. I go to San Francisco. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking this is one of my first flights out, and I didn't know the beaches very well. And it just how happens, I go to fly on the nude beach. Everybody knows it's the Baker Beach. It's the nude beach. Oh, yeah. You know it. I'm you walking know down to the yeah. beach. I'm walking down to the... You knew that. I didn't know that. Why did you know that? Because I go photograph there a lot, and whatever. every time I go post a photo, everybody's like, oh, did you see the nude people? Yeah. Every time. Have you ever seen nude people? No. It's They're usually there. so damn cold. It's not there. really a nude no. beach then, is it? It's, uh, yeah. Because I, I think what makes it a nude beach is nude people. I could be wrong. Trust me, they're there. Or people with a shiny so, spot. So um, let me tell you, for dramatic, it's not a good place to go photograph at a nude beach. No. Yeah. No. It's bad etiquette all around. That's, um, however, I have come. Wait. Dun, 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 dun. If I do go photograph at a nude beach, I think it's appropriate to be in the nude. If you're flying a copter and you're nude, they have nothing. What can they say? What can they say, right? I've come to that conclusion. That's that so would be. Have you tested did we this, just though? take like three minutes of this show to talk about nude beaches yes, and then did. and then give a tip on how to photograph at a nude beach? No. Scott King says I really saw this Scott show has going in a different nude direction. Beaches and sex tape too many times this episode. It is a lot for me, Scott. It's I'm leaving. More than I would, would normally okay, do. Okay, let's bring this back. Let's bring serious moment. Um new perspectives in the sky. I did think you just say nude perspectives no. in the sky? <laughs> I did that not. was for Scott King. <laughs> I did not. Sorry. Okay. It's a new perspective. It's a great tool for photographers. I think it has great potential. It's just getting some bad press right now. And some, uh, un there are people who aren't using it correctly. Have you ever mounted a bomb that releases from there? Like mm. you fly over, like, you know. No, I would never do that. Corks no. headquarters. No. Release hey, one. Boom. We got to take a break. But so oh, you, oh, no, you said use it, using it correctly. So oh, there's I think a break. Let's, we should talk more about that. Using it correctly okay. and, and some let's of the talk ways about for that. Correct usage. Okay. Um, both creatively and yes. legally. Yeah. So, but we do have to take a break. As you know, Brad likes to write little messages on our break sign. So this week he appropriately wrote because I'd have to say I echo his thoughts. Dear Lord, can we take a freaking break? And the answer would be, yes, yes we can. Russell, take us to break. <laughs> Where's he's way over here? He's not even at the camera. He's proving let's that now, no one needs to be at the camera. Let's now go on break. God, that was pretty good. That was good. That was, okay, was terrible. Yeah, don't look at the jib. That's bad form. It's like shooting the new That was terrible. That's Long enough That's break. not a break. Don't we have? Do we have any more ads? Come on. Hey, so, wait, wait. What? Seriously? What? That ad. I was using a quadcopter. 
Yeah, so here's what we did. We we had a chase boat beside our boat. Yeah. With a quadcopter and one of our video we guys did. who's quite good at it. And they flew. Can we run that ad again? Number one, I yeah, want you to go it, to Photoshop. Yeah, watch it. Watch it with yeah, But, but it with know that, that these the, the scenes of the boat, that's the real boat we were on. It starts off with an overhead scene. Yes. You see the boat, and then you see it kind of fly past us. Now, it, it was a very windy day out there. We had kind of, uh, They had a hard time controlling it because you're out at sea, and you're moving. You're in a boat, and... It's a windy day because we're in a sailboat. But take a look. Watch this now, knowing that a lot of these shots were taken of course. on a well, boat anyway. One of my guidelines is don't fly in bad weather. Don't fly. Well, we had to do it. We had the day we had the boat. Okay, we don't okay. have, yeah. Even that closing, that little closing shot was yeah, coming right, right, across right across the right there end. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I, I've dressed up in a lot of stupid outfits for Photoshop World stuff and the movies and stuff. I hated. I look like Captain Crunch. In, in the, I'm seriously, I could not stand that outfit. It was ill-fitting, and I could not keep the belt on. The belt, it just, I don't know what the deal was. It was too big, and I just couldn't. It was, it was the worst. I, I, See, I didn't care for the Star Trek outfits. Personally. Oh, yeah, that wasn't good either. That but wasn't a good one. Do you know look. the funniest part of, about that day? Was for some reason, Scott took talking as a pirate as your kid must have watched SpongeBob SquarePants that day. I because, have an eight year old daughter. We still watch SpongeBob. At, instead of just talking like a, like, our matey, it was he talked like the, the guy from SpongeBob SquarePants. Squidward! <laughs> all yeah, all day long, Krams. all we heard was Squidward. Squidward! <laughs> <laughs> he does a really good impression too. I gotta tell you. Yeah, I'm not gonna do any more than the word Squidward, but uh, yeah, we did a whole thing. Who lives anyway, in a pineapple under the sea. Where were we? Were we just? I lost a no, hundred dollar bet that day too. Okay. You that did lose a hundred dollar bet that day. I did. Matt yeah, lost a hundred. Well, you, you know, you lost a steak dinner bet, which, by the way, I have still not collected. I tried. I'm not doing anything tonight. I tried. Anyway, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. You wanted to take me that night, like no, I'm in my I captain, didn't. like Captain no. Crunch. Out, Let's go to Ocean Prime. Anyway, <laughs> Squidward. So, so um, we forget that that bad day. But you did lose a hundred dollar bet. Just was seeing if he was ready. Oh, he's so not ready. <laughs> All right, here's a good question. Good question. And then we're going to talk okay. about uh, uh, Russell Shelley F's or Shelley. F. Says, are you ever worried about losing your quadcopter or even crashing such an expensive equipment? And I want to preface this by uh, there's a, a, a good friend of, I think, all of ours, uh, Barry Blanchard. Yes. Posts a lot on Facebook yes. and YouTube. Yes. And, um, and so he, he's been doing a lot of this work as well. So his Facebook page the other day had this garbled picture. Sad. And it said, so long, good buddy. Mm -hmm. And it said, "This is the last. This is the last image that my DJI quad, whatever." DJI was upside down, saw sitting in the surf before it sunk into the ocean. Yeah. So yeah, there are people that do lose them. So I'll answer. Should I answer this? To see if I can find. I'll this. answer this question. Um, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it. I think there's a there's a workflow to this. I think you start with the in most inexpensive camera the inexpensive copter, and you first learn to fly. Fly over land is your first, um, and you're flying over nice green grass. You can crash, get that out of the way, learn about the way wind um, turbulence works, landing, taking off, learn all of the basics. Of course, that's part of my Kelby One tutorials that you can see in a few months. Okay. I, I need to have Russell on more. <laughs> you are the best promo guy for your class ever. I'm working it. You are. Those Kelby, those Kelby One tutorials. And don't forget the Photoshop World Precon. OK. Um, <laughs> OK, You're where was here anytime. Where can I go? OK, we were saying, um, so I I went through the I got the, through that first copter. I destroyed that first copter. It was that simple four hundred dollar copter. Trashed it. Got okay. Tr blew into the tree. It's went still into the ground. Bucks. What about the camera on it? Oh, it didn't have a camera. I was learning how to fly. Oh. 
Then I put the GoPro on and I put the GoPro on inside of its protective case. So now I can crash and the camera's fine and sometimes just repair, but it's a very sturdy uh, shell on this. It has an exoskeleton. I should have gone there. Exoskeleton for a shell. And that's a much more, uh, much stronger, um, uh, it can fall from 200 feet and still survive on grass, not on... Um, <laughs> yeah, what happens when it hits concrete? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And I've seen some, you know, thousands of dollars come out of the sky. But yes, I'm afraid. But just last week, I'm literally flying over water all the time from a boat. And I do not recommend that as your first project. <laughs> because when you take off with this, you have a magnet that determines where you are, your position, you're in space. And when it takes off, it remembers that spot. And if for some reason you lose connection with the copter, it will come fly on its own autonomously. Don't you like that word? Autonomously back to this that location. Spot. That spot. But if you move. If you're in a boat. <laughs> you're not in that spot so anymore. That was in advanced mode. But I'm, I'm scared out of my mind. I'm flying over this water. The winds are stirring up over Maui and Lanai. And um, I always put in a fresh card for each flight. So I have an eight gig card that goes in. I swap it out. Please don't crash, please don't crash. I come back with all of that great footage, save it away, put in a new card. I go into the sky. Um, so Shelly F, um, yes, you always have to, and you, I think you need to be afraid of this. Are you looking on my site? I, I wanna find those, those questions. You said you had posted some, oh, it was your Facebook page. Facebook, oh, Russell that's Preston different. Brown. I think you're my friend. Um, um, right. Why isn't it there? Does the quadcopter float? That's uh, F ships asks. I, I think that's your question. Yeah, don't um, worry about that one. Okay. Uh, does the quadcopter float? No. Are there precautions you can take? There are companies that create the spray that you can open up the case and spray it with waterproofing. You can spray every little corner and crevice with some waterproofing. I've heard some mixed results on that. I've seen peop some people take um, water bottles and glue them to each of the four corners so that it can actually land on water. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> crazy. Hmm. And then if the GoPro camera is submersible, it can go down in. Why, well, I should promote that. What um, is that? What is that? We'll get to that in a minute. And so, but <laughs> if you go into the water, it, it, fresh water, dry it off really quickly. Into salt water, wave goodbye, because the corrosive elements in the salt water will leave that. Why, you're on my Facebook page, and that's the, that's the um, Adobe Texture Panel Pro, which is the new HTML version of that panel that works in Photoshop CC 14. Ooh, I just released Ooh. that is it, yesterday. Is it? Um, and so, does it have oil paint included with it? Uh, the oil paint? No, I haven't updated that one yet. This is the first one to be updated. Oil paint's gone. Yes, yeah, for the moment. That it's looks gone. pretty cool, though. So this lets you use some default textures. Um, from flypaper <coughs> textures, but you can load your own textures. And we all know how to load a texture into an image and then run different blend modes right, on it. Sure. And it creates cool effects. Well, you want to be able to just click. Oh, oh that's a cool image. That's what it look where I am. So you want to be able to take the Texture Panel Pro and. Scott, I'm not. I'm he's not. Just, sorry, just I'm searching. Looking, I'm searching. I'll, I will let you just know when I am ready. Zoom on, on. There's, it's no nothing interesting happening over there. Sassy cameraman. So you want to get Texture Panel Pro, and you can go find the link to it on my Facebook page, Russell Preston Brown. Texture Panel Pro works in Photoshop CC 14 only. It's a new HTML panel. It lets you load a texture onto any image just by clicking on the textures that are supplied with the panel, and it then applies a blend mode like overlay or multiply, and you get really cool effects, and you can look cool and get people to like you on Facebook with just one click. Nice. And so it's our first in a series of panels. You mentioned the watercolor or the oil paint panel I have, and we're trying to upgrade those as well. That's one of my 
side jobs is creating panels with Yeah, Tom a lot of people Moore. would be happy to see that. Well, not, um, not a lot of people. Six people would be happy. Six so, people. No, the people that used it are like, oh, my gosh, where is it? And the rest of the people are like, there was no oil. You know how many people that said there's an oil page filter? When I, I wrote know, it, but it was cool. Like, I, I know. It actually did a really good job. So can we uh, switch over to my, uh, there we go. So, Russell, this is one of your pictures here that you did. You use this the backdrop of your class? Yes, we use that the backdrop of the class. Dude, what just, the heck is this scary thing? That scary thing over there, that is an S1000. That's the big boy from the DJI. So you move from left to right. You start with the smaller devices and you move to the right. That device um, costs lots of thousands of dollars, plus the camera do you see down below. That's a gimbal with a Canon camera, perhaps a 5D Mark III. So, okay, you've got two, you've got $4,000 worth of copter. Holy crap. And how many? How many? $4,000 worth of copter, and you've mm -hmm. got a $4,000 camera there. Uh, so, basically, less than a Nikon 400 f2.8 by about $4,000? Uh, oh, is that the price? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so, twelve thousand, thirteen thousand dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. Isn't so, it thirteen grand now for that four hundred two point eight? Brad, hello. The Nikon four hundred F two two eight, the new one, thirteen thousand bucks. So you've got a lot of money in the air there. It is a lot of money. And in the air. you need to be very serious, and that's a two man team. Oh, why that's a great shot. That and is, that a, is a vertical panorama of a waterfall, but. I'm looking straight down on the waterfall. Ah. That is the, this is the backside so, of um, Maui, and I need to take a class there. We need to teach a class Is there. this your boat? Yes, I'm flying from that boat. You're on that boat? I'm on that boat, flying in the sky, looking at this. <clears throat> Let me tell you about this. It's called Hulu Rock. The palm trees on the top of that rock only grow on that spire, that pinnacle, off of that island, nowhere else in the world, that's where they grow. Really? Okay, really. Hulu Rock has a unique species of palm tree at the mm. top of it. And so I'm doing this. That's extreme. That went too, that, that's so bizarre. That's me doing a, a vertical panorama. But look now, at is the, this you here? I am. Those are a uh, couple of F-16s? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm underneath the boat. Uh, we're underneath that this shot. This is very risky stuff you're doing. This is risky stuff. Look, I'm flying over that water. Because these don't a, float. It was a gorgeous day. How uh, how sharp are, are these like photos? A like how that's a good question. Somebody hasn't asked. Um, because we're talking GoPro quality. Is that amazing? That that's sweet. Look at that. This is the backside of Molokai, and it's it's heaven on earth. No one gets back there. It just so happens that the day was calm, and I was out on an adventure tour um, out of Maui, and we drove over there. He said, "Let's go for it." The backside of uh, Molokai is looking calm. It's normally super windy, lots of waves, and the boat is there to the left, right over there, and I'm flying up over the land looking out to sea. I'm using, this is the Phantom Vision Plus. The camera quality is similar to a GoPro quality, but, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, the, Go, the um, DJI people have adopted DNG as their format. That's the first camera to support DNG in their Vision Plus. And so I now can get much more detail in the highlights and the shadows with DNG. And we, it's, you, we want to work with a RAW file instead of with the GoPro sure. camera, you only get JPEG images. Hey, what happened to so the questions? Sh questions how are there and they're all going away. Brad, they were, we answered them. Oh, did we? Um, oh. So the, I I'm mean, really that, surprised like, how sharp. How big can you print? Did you see that print in the other room? Is six feet by three feet, I have to go four look at feet it. tall. Can we bring it in here? I, I suppose if somebody went can in. Can somebody brought, go grab it? I think Aaron's going to get it. He's running. How much time do they have? It's quite impressive. You can see the grain in it, but we all know if you, you're not looking at a print on the wall, you know, two, two yeah, feet now. away. You're six Only feet away. It's comfortable. It's sharp. The grain is in it. Only photographers care about that. Yeah. And so, for ter care about the grain? Yeah. yeah. You know, the rest doesn't. of the world doesn't. They don't know you could, I love going to movie theaters and looking at the close up on the movie posters. Movie posters at theaters are so educational for how they put those together and construct those. You look at those, that grain, the grain are like oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're rocks. You stand back, it looks great. I actually love because they realize that the people going to yeah, the movies I could love care less. the grain yeah. in those photos. And you, when you when you when you view these things at the distance they're designed to be viewed, six to eight feet, yeah. they're shark as attack. Anytime you're in the airport, walk up to one of those backlit signs, and you're like, attack. "Whoa!" Oh. 
There's a lot of grain to those. Say shark is so, an attack. Shark is an attack. Now, this image, uh, if they can switch back to the image on the screen, um, I know they want to cut away from me, but um, this image is a combination one, two. This has five images blended together, so you're building up a lot of resolution for this. Five Why, Aaron Grimes, come on to the set. Hey, look, it's Aaron. Block everyone here. So where do you want this? Behind us? We're just standing in front no, of No, you party? can stand. Well, the, that, well, yeah. Where better. do they see it? Let's put it behind us. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There's now, let's see. Oh, we have to come down lower. Hey, if you go down a little lower, they'll look like I'm there. Oh, good. Okay, keep on going. Now go back to the other camera. Okay. Down lower. <laughs> yeah, look at wow, Scott. Wow, it's Scott's there. So look at the quality. It's a little soft in areas, but... You know what? When you see it from when the distance that like you're supposed to. Yeah, let's see it on camera. Can we can we get a better shot of it, like so a straight on shot? No, we have a straight on camera. They're gonna cut away. There on. we go. That looks sharp. Tilt it down a little there. Um, so six to five images um, combined together, and um, blending them in Photoshop, a photo merge, and my class is on cut to Russ. <laughs> Class, no, don't cut to me. Class is on Kelby One, due out soon. Um, we'll show exactly how to merge these and blend these all together. Look at this one. Gosh, this is really a compelling shot. Look at that. I'll, I'll move this got one it. out. I got it, he's moving up. That okay. is really compelling. Stop. You Interesting you should bring that one up. That's Monument Valley That's or it. Cypress Gardens, Florida. Um, interesting you should bring that one up because that one, Scott, was shot with a GoPro camera. Um, I don't know if they could hear me. Um, what's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. So that's shot with a GoPro camera, and it's a video pan of the valley. So the copter is doing. Wait, Russ, he can do this. Can I do this? Mm -hmm. Copter goes here. Copter is going rotate, rotating on its axis in midair, capturing the video. Then I'm capturing. That's a still from video? That is a still from video. Wow. Wow. So that is the power of capturing the frames from a GoPro. Aaron shot that, of course, in for dramatic. I was there as his director. Aaron Grimes shot that, and then I took the frames out of it, merged it together, brought it, those frames into Aaron camera. Aaron Grimes, is he related to Hank Aaron? <laughs> No, there's a there's a, a has been photographer Aaron by the Westgate? name uh, Joel Grimes. He's, he's uh, oh Grimes. Grimes. Oh. Yeah. No, he's on Walking Dead. <laughs> yes. Is he the guy, the sheriff. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's British, but he yeah. sounds English on the yeah. show. Yeah, that's okay. his father. No, it's Joel Grimes' son. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good yes. job, dude. So I brought Aaron right. in to help me with this class because I'm not the video expert and he is, and. Um, that proves that he's a video expert. Yeah, that's amazing that you pulled that out of video is just amazing. Yeah, it's... Do you know how to run a camera that's on sticks? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scott King has a, has a good question. Scott so, King. How hard is it to make money off a of quadcopter? Is it something that easily pays for itself? Because I feel wow. like if I were to get one, it'd be a hobby or a money hole. Oh, thank you, Scott King, for that question. Number one, if he wants to make money, easily make money. I don't think I don't think money just flows okay. in. No, let's make this clear. The FAA has set a guideline that you. It's just only, a guideline. A uh, guideline. No, it's a law. Is I, it a law? It's a guideline. Um, that you cannot, <laughs> you cannot, charge money for taking images using these small quadcopters. Now, yeah. do they have a force of 400, 600 enforcement people that scour the web daily looking for your shot and then they send these enforcement people to arrest you? Um, Scott, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stating the I'm, law because I'm, I'm now at this side right. of the show, I'm serious and I'm not going to get into trouble. Um, but um, there is a law, you are a hobbyist when you fly this and you cannot make money off of the sale of the images from this, but you can photograph this, take the images, share them with friends, print them out, do anything you want, but you can't make any money off share of Share them with companies and then take a donation. Um, 
I've heard of some creative I'm people not, doing some. So I'm not recommending that. How could That's one wrong. legally make money? It's against I think the law. If you wanted to legally make money at this, um, I'd probably get into the movie industry, and then they go out and get permits, and they have special um, permits that the movie industry can get to go out and fly with a larger. Devices. I, I know. Uh, I know what a lot of photographers are doing. Are is they put it as a free line item in their bill. Yeah, I didn't say that, but you just did. That's very interesting. I didn't say I did. I, I just said I know but of a lot of photographers that do. That? Yes. Can I say something? And I'm, this is. And I'm being serious. Yes. We've been able to to use RC helicopters for years and years yes. and years now. You you four years ago you bought. I kids. bought an AR drone for my an kids a, from an, Brookstone. An AR drone from Brookstone. You Did can it have a camera? Yeah. You can uh, go to Radio Shack and buy these things every Christmas, millions of them. Result. All of a sudden, as, someone, as soon as somebody builds something that actually is good, yes. now it's like, we've got to make a log about this. It, there's just too many of them right now, and that's what the problem is. And people are... How um, could there be more of them than there are for Christmas? I'm not kidding. No, seriously, Russell. That's a very expensive thing. Yes. There can't be 50,000 of those or 125,000, but there are on Christmas. Yeah. They're all on the same day. Every kid gets... And how high were those those things go? The ones you had? 100 feet? A couple hundred feet? There yeah, weren't... Okay, not too, but yeah, 100 feet. 100 feet? 50 feet. They go 100 feet. One Why can't the, they go, the ceiling on these is blank? There is a ceiling that you are limited to 400 feet in the sky as a hobbyist. It's a 40-story building. Yeah, it's it's I know, just but, fine. But why in the world? Mm -hmm. Because seriously, Russell, yes. tell me, like in, in the town that we are in right now, yes. there cannot be a whole bunch of quadcopters. Probably. However, there can be 5,000 RC copters. There's a hobby store right down the street. Yes. You go to Radio Shack. You ever go to Radio Shack in the holiday? Everything's an RC. So the... You said the game changer earlier. It's, it's now that, as you said, the quality of the camera, the availability of these copters, the reliability, they're easy to fly, and it's accessible to a lot of people. And so now we're venturing into areas they can go places they haven't gone before. And so more people are concerned about them. And I think the, the news service is searching for stories about this all the time as well, so there's yes. a bit of negative press. But it needs, I'd like to see it become a real commercial use that I can go fly and take quality imagery from the sky, following guidelines, staying away from people, and, and charge someone for my services. Yes, people are charging for it now and they're hiding it within their um, yeah. line items. So yes, it's it's being used by real estate right now. It's being used by the film industry. Um, there's a lot of commercial use. Why couldn't I go flying in one of these, take the photograph, and say that I rented a helicopter to do it? And there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, You're telling people how to break the law, and that's wrong. That's right. I did just say that. Let me take that back. You would never break a rule or a law <laughs> in order to monetarily gain from this process now that we've made my that wife just clear. texted me about my, my wife's a, a pilot yes she says don't mess with the faa no she sends me a week i face. am not messing with the we are FAA. not I messing make it clear i have stated FAA. that i follow all the faa rules i never fly near an airport i never fly near people i never fly over traffic i never wait a minute nude beach you couldn't... Uh, I didn't fly there. I walked away. So you couldn't get this photo today, right? No. That's a national park? I it's flew forbidden. that before it, but I also got... I was on Indian reservation. I paid the local Indian tribe to be in that location at that time. I felt as if I was in a sovereign state with an Indian guide. I this thought, is good. But I think that photo could not be taken now because of the regulations. Can I ask you so, a question, so I will Russell? Follow, yes. Because this is an interesting question. Yes. Does the FAA have any sway over Indian land? Um, they are in control of the airspace over that Indian land. I think the Indian nation is in charge of the physical land itself, the rocks. If you are touching the ground in any way, um, that is their jurisdiction. But the, the airspace air, is as long FAA. As you, look, you're going to jail. It's well, just, I just want you to come to peace with it. Yes. Because I think that we could raise some money for your bail. Yeah. Well, I can also tell you that I was tethered to the ground when we took this shot. 
Anybody still watching, Brian? If you are tethered with a 150-foot tether <laughs> to the ground with your copter, it's considered it is now falling into a new category. It is now a balloon or a kite. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. If you're tethered to if it? If I'm tethered to the ground, I am now part of Dude, the that was worth the show right there. I just want to make that clear. You, you would fall into a new category as a kite or a balloon, 150 feet in the air. You must so, not exceed. So, let me ask you this. Yes. Hypothetical situation. Yes. You go and you shoot something for a client. It's a commercial char thing. Yes. You charge them. You can charge Wait, no. if you shoot is, from a balloon. Is there any way to look at an image, like one of your images perhaps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and go... I'm not sure that's tethered. <laughs> I have taken photographs of myself tethered to prove that I was tethered at that time. How about if you fly it up once with yes. a tether, take a quick shot, cut the tether, now you can go and do whatever you want. I, as an Adobe employee, would never do would that. Document All right, some quick questions that we're done because we're already over time. <laughs> yes. Clifford Martin asks, what GoPro camera settings does he, he being Russell Brown, Soon to be in jail of Adobe use. Yes, I am in trouble. Once again, I must say, who's asking this question? Clifford Martin. Clifford Martin. You'll have to stay tuned for my tutorial mine? on this that I recorded for Kelby One. But the bottom you. line, for video, it's always um, 2.7 um, cine mode for the video <coughs> for the GoPro. And the 12 megapixel mode for still images is the correct answer. And I prefer not to turn on this setting. Um, there's a pro of, uh, setting that you can turn on for this. Um, where's Aaron? What's Aaron? What's that? Uh, pro, pro, pro Tunes. I keep Pro Tunes off. I use 12K. I'm shooting five frames every second um, because you don't, in the air, this is shooting um, time lapse. And so I think those are the two things, the, the, um, those settings are most important. Turn off the Pro Tunes, shoot 12 megapixels, and let's think what else does he want to shoot. Um, those are the only real controls you have for the GoPro. But if you're using the Phantom Vision Plus, you can adjust the white balance, you can adjust um, the ISO and the exposure, you have a lot of controls with those. I've even shot an HDR image from the air during a calm winds. <gasps> oh no, HDR from the air. That's, wait, dramatic. Dun, dun, dun. That puts a whole lot of controversial HDR stuff together. HDR from the air. It's a new tutorial brought to you by Kelby One. Watch for it in a month. Okay. <laughs> Lee Calkins, do you shoot blind or do you get the video a video feed from the camera? In the beginning of time, I shot blind. <laughs> beginning of time. And we sent up a simple quadcopter with the GoPro shooting its images. And I sat on the ground and I moved up and I moved down and I twisted and turned. And it's shooting one image every two seconds. And um, sometimes you were lucky, sometimes you weren't. So in the beginning, blind. Now I have a monitor that's attached here, and the signal comes back from the GoPro. Bring those into frame, Russ. Signal comes back from the GoPro camera, comes to my monitor, and I can see it on the monitor, fairly clear monitor, and you have a little uh, screen that goes around the monitor so you can see it in the daylight. Um, so you get a really good photo of what you're seeing from the air. You can do this monitor, or you can do what's called fat shark goggles, and you put the goggles on, and you get funny looks on your face because you're in the air flying like this, and you look, you're look you looking at the ground, and everybody thinks you're crazy. But you have a first-person view I, I get through the Russell. goggles. It's not the glasses. <laughs> Nat Member UK, which is in our UK? very, very good buddy. Yes, he's, What's he's, he doing awake? What is he doing? Well, you know what it is? He can't sleep. Okay, what time is it in the UK? It's not that late. That's our buddy Dave Clayton, one of the greatest guys it's on the planet. Dave Clayton? Yeah, Dave Clayton. Okay, you know, Dave. Russell, do you need to have insurance in case you damage anything? Yeah, do you need to have insurance, if, liability insurance? Uh, absolutely. If I had one of the big copters, I'd have, as a professional photographer, um, you must have, I have, don't have insurance on my camera. I'm not a professional. This is interesting um, to note. Um, if Russell crashes near you, 
Um, Good luck. Bring your checkbook. So, you know, you should have insurance on this type of equipment um, as it gets more and more. But, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to insure. I guess you could say it's a camera and you want to insure it. Yeah, I'd like you to go. Well, I think it's more if that falls on somebody were to hurt them, somebody rides their bike under it and it falls. Nice. Would it fall under your homeowner? Oh, I don't think flying that out in the wilderness would fall under your... I, I'm well, not talking about replacing it. the... Comp, I'm talking about... Damaging it, something. It hits some... Freak accident. You know, someone yeah. someone comes by uh, out here in Monument Valley and that thing falls on them. And you didn't know they were there and they come paddling by in a canoe and Bad. bang! You That's know. why you never fly over people. Never You're fly. so tempted. Over people. You are so tempted. Not a lot of canoes in Monument Valley. All right. No, well, I'm just saying. I was trying to think of what... You would car? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Thing. Okay. Uh, uh, contest. We got to wrap this up. We got a I contest. I want to ask Dave Clayton a question. Do you think I'm in trouble for anything I've said here today, Dave? Dave thinks you're always in trouble. Okay. Okay. I think I made it very clear that I follow all the rules, and you should too. Man, you do. It was so squeaky clean. I follow all, right. all the rules. Oh, oh. Man, they they're already forward yeah, at the contest. Is. Sorry. All right. You win a prize, select the show, put your name, put your email. Most importantly, put a comment on what you want to win, and... Uh, Maybe you'll win one. And if you weren't here at the very beginning of the show, here's what we're giving away. We're giving away two tickets to Joe McNally's uh, Power, The Power of One Flash Tour, which is in Seattle this Friday. Wow. So Friday the 27th. Seventh. All right. And that, that is of June. Then we have uh, these two things. Peter Krogs, the damn book guy to organizing your photos. And Roberto Valenzuela, Picture Perfect Practice, Presentation Zen, and Master the Model Shoot. And if you don't win any of those, go over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Kelby One Online. We're giving away five copies of Frank's book there. You might be able to win a copy. It's an awesome, or just awesome buy one. book by an awesome, awesome guy. Or just go buy one when they're sold wherever cool books are sold at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, at any of those happy places. Did I happen to mention that I have a pre-con at Photoshop World <laughs> no. on aerial photography? Is it at the same time where my Lightroom pre-con is it going is. on? <laughs> yeah. But mine, you get to fly a copter and make a movie. You know what, though? I got to look. Your thing may actually be sold out. No, I just checked. Did you? Okay. Sold out. You got a couple it's seats It's going to be an amazing class. All right. It always sells out, but it's yeah. okay. All He's right. just checking now. So, Scott, what's your pre-con about? I don't ever have a oh, pre-con. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. I, Ask Matt. Matt. Matt I'm not allowed to. I'm, it's a busy day for me. Matt, what is your pre-con about? Yeah. I have no idea. Anymore. Lightroom. Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom. Not mobile. I'd, I'd be a quick Just pre- segue. I'd love to do a pre-con on Lightroom big, Mobile. No, go from have, 1 yeah, to 115. You still got a few seats. I'm a big user of Lightroom Mobile on my iPhone. I really love that capability of shooting right into the cloud, right into my Lightroom catalog, and making those adjustments Russell, on the fly. Russell, you shoot into the cloud. The cloud. Can see it. <laughs> All right. So anyway, hey, uh, Russell, thank you very much. Thank this you. Is very, very informative. Very, very interesting. Uh, more than I've ever known about quadcopter. I was kind of interested in them, and you know, we actually have some here that we use for non-commercial purposes. That's right. We Wait didn't. a minute. You used it in that video. No, 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 we didn't. You said you did. No, we didn't. <laughs> okay. Stupid. That was, you rented, you, you rented a, a helicopter and they're hanging out of the open door of the helicopter, right? Yes, it was a helicopter. helicopter. It was a copter, I swear. <clears throat> okay. It was a copter. Anyway, on behalf of everyone here and Arnaldo, the part-time dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not. <sighs> Just go. <gonna flick. laughs> it's been quite a show, hasn't it? It's been a show. John Knack, Russell, Russell Brown. Brown, Russell Preston, Preston Brown, Preston Brown, Just RPB. Look. I don't know what to say, Matt. I think it's time to end the show. Thank you for watching. If you're still there, which I don't, I don't think. I maybe, can't imagine anyone would be still watching. Four or five of you are. Fly Thank you for watching. Safe. Thanks to all the you know sponsors. You who's watching? Scott King. Scott King. Fly yeah, safe. Too. Always you follows us. FAA rules like I do. Okay. For sure. And we'll leave with that. Hey, we we taped that before that rule was ever in place. We taped that thing like a year ago. <laughs>